Hey and welcome back to the channel. Ed Bud here and I've got an update for you today on my half marathon training over the last few days and also my views and opinions on the Nike Joyride. So you may well have seen Nike have released a new trainer over the last few days, the Nike Joyride featuring a new technology within the midsole. That shoe did appear for Nike Plus members probably about 10 days ago, but I held off getting it and here is why. So very recently, I've been trying to do a lot more in terms of my impact on the environment, in terms of carbon footprint, and also trying to recycle more materials that I use, trying to minimize the usage of plastics. Gonna make more of an effort to try and recycle clothing, utilize as much as I can out of those running shoes I've been getting. Hey, you know I use them a lot anyway, I'm gonna use them into the floor uh, so I can update you on their wear and tear and their longevity. I now even have a wooden toothbrush. But there's something about this Nike shoe that really upsets me. It's been causing a lot of controversy. A lot of people have been reviewing it in terms of an easy day shoe, talking about its price, talking about its performance. I want to talk about its impact on the environment. I think people are looking at this shoe in terms of its use as a casual shoe, perhaps as an easy day shoe for those recovery runs. That's great, but what about those beads in the midsole? You could responsibly recycle these shoes at one of Nike's various drop-off points. Yep, you could send them, fair enough, but how many people are actually gonna take time out to do that? At some point, these shoes are gonna become damaged, the outsole's gonna wear off, and those beads are gonna escape. As you well know, there's loads and loads of plastic now floating around in the sea, it's not doing us any good. It's not doing the creatures or the life within the sea any good whatsoever. So environmentally, within the midsole of this shoe, we have thermoplastic elastomere beads. I know Seth Fowler within his review has talked extensively about the technology used to create those beads and, and what they are. Uh, anything from what I can see that's small, that's gonna be able to escape very easily, isn't gonna be great in terms of its environmental impact. Not everybody's gonna recycle these shoes responsibly. Some people are just gonna throw them away in the trash. They're gonna end up in landfills over time. Even just if they get punctured, these shoes are gonna leak those beads out everywhere. It's not a great thing. A single person over the course of a year uses about 100 kilograms of plastic. So it's just plastic waste, okay? I can understand a shoe, it's kind of one thing. If you recycle it responsibly and get it back to where it needs to go, it can obviously be channeled back into materials to create more running shoes. But with this, I mean, it's just it's such a different thing. It's not like Boost where the, the, the pieces are kind of fused together. We've got loose beads here. Surely it can't be a good thing. They reckon at the moment there's about 100 million tons worth of plastic floating around in the sea. Do we really need to be making more stuff that can be ingested by these creatures in the sea? And the answer is no, we really don't. Especially not for an easy day shoe like this that costs 160 pounds. All that plastic that's floating around the sea absorbs toxins and various other things. And when those creatures do ingest it, it's not doing them any good. And lots of people out there do then go and eat those creatures. Just think about that for a second. Yeah, not good, is it? Plastics tend to take about 500 years to break down. So they're gonna be here a hell of a lot longer than you are. So it's something that's very hard to contain, very small pieces, and kind of the onus is still on us as the consumers or the customers to dispose of these things responsibly. So what I would suggest, Nike, you put returns labels in your boxes why don't you put returns labels to send these shoes back once they've been used so they can be responsibly recycled? Very easily done. You've already got a return label in there. Have something else on there that you can cross out maybe with a pen and have it returned back to your depot so that it can be recycled responsibly and created, turned into more running shoes. Easy, easy solution. I know Seth Fowler covered the Zoom X Vista Grind, which uses cut off pieces of uh, the Zoom X foam within its midsole. And that's a great idea and very different execution of that kind of idea of using something in the midsole. Here we've got beads, they're just so small, they're gonna go everywhere. I know that this is the Nike Grind initiative to reuse all that stuff. That's brilliant, that's a really great thing. It's a really positive thing but you need to make it easier 
for people to be able to send that stuff back to you. In terms of the shoe for running, I'm not going to be reviewing it guys, I'm not going to be buying it. It's not something I need, I don't think it's something that is required really. There are far better shoes out there for recovery type runs, for those easy miles. Go and buy yourself some New Balance Beacon ones. They're, they're super cheap at the moment, they'll do a way better job than these. They're way cheaper, they're more versatile, that's surely a better buy. And it's ridiculously expensive, 160 for recovery type shoes, uh, pff, that's, that's just crazy. So, do your bit, let's try and clean up the place. Rant over. So, training continued at the end of last week for my attempt at a sub 1 hour 30 time at the Immortal Sport Salisbury Half Marathon. Two sessions completed and there was some variance in terms of the success this time around. I was very busy having a rest day at the Adventure Wonderland over near Bournemouth. Highly recommended if you've got small people that you need to entertain. It's pretty cheap, uh, reasonably priced. They had a good varied uh, selection of foods there and lots and lots for them to do. Lots and lots of uh, rides and attractions to keep people busy. So on Friday, I undertook a seven mile run around about seven minutes, 15 seconds per mile. I clocked in just over 51 minutes, so I was relatively pleased with that effort really. Although sandwiched in the middle of that effort was supposed to be three miles at round about half marathon target pace. And I just didn't get there. I think I was a little off, mainly due to riding on the teacups, chasing people around, going on climbing frames, riding on mine carts, elephants that kind of go up and down, and swaying on pirate ships. That's my excuse anyway. So I started out with two mile warm up, around about four minutes 30 per kilometer pace. I managed to up the pace a little bit by around about 10, 15 seconds, but I didn't get close to the sort of four minutes 15 per kilometer pace that I really need. That's the pace I'm gonna to have to achieve to try and get that sub one hour 30 half marathon time. Uh, it's gonna to be tough, but I'm gonna keep on trying. Gonna see if I can get there, maybe. I was being cautious though, listening to the body, I did feel tired, uh, I knew that pushing myself to the very limit, which I was going to have to do for that run, it was going to be close to my limits, it wasn't going to be a successful attempt. So, listening to my body, even with the Vaporfive 4% flying it to try and help me out a little bit on the pace, I knew that it was going to be tough going. So, listening to the body, not pushing myself beyond my current kind of parameters. I think these are coming up to about 150 miles now, and in fairness, they're looking pretty good. Um, there is some considerable wear on the outsole. This section's great though, up at the forefoot here. It's brilliant, it, there's hardly any wear. I'm really surprised at this. Um, I've seen some real shock kind of horror stories with these shoes where people have got really upset about the longevity of them. I ain't gonna get loads more miles out of this one yet. Uh, I think once that kind of pop of the, the plate and the, and the Zoom X has kind of worn down a bit and it's got a bit compressed i think it's still going to be a really fantastic shoe it's so comfortable to wear i'm really still enjoying this fly knit version so sunday had a far more successful training run of nine miles at seven minutes 30 seconds per mile it equates to about four minutes 40 per kilometer i chose the same route as friday it's pretty good really in terms of a training route nice and flat and there's not too many very tight bends to negotiate Went out at a nice quiet time really, temperature dropped off a little bit, it's around about 20 degrees, so ideal kind of conditions. It's a route round a training estate, so there aren't really any significant obstacles to kind of navigate around. No kind of members of the public hassling me, dogs, badgers, kids verbally abusing me, so ideal conditions. I use the Pegasus Turbo 2s again to great effect on this run. Really enjoying the shoe, lacing system fantastic and I'm not really feeling this section bottoming out. Around about nine miles as well, I, I really felt this shoe performed better than the original iteration. It just basically doesn't feel like it's there almost. You're just kind of running along, uh, you're not having to worry too much about anything at all other than your performance. Pace felt nice and sustainable in the Pegasus Turbo 2s, kept the cadence to just over 170 steps per minute. So completed the session and the nine miles in round about 67 minutes. So really pleased with that effort. A very positive session to end the week. So completed round about 33.4 miles. I was about six miles off due to missing one of the sessions during the week. That was mainly due to childcare, but in fairness, I would have missed all of the sessions if I had to. That little person's always going to be my priority. 
So moving on to week three, training is going to step up again. I think there's a few miles added on here and there to the long runs. Look out for a new shoe review and a comparison video between the Nike Zoom Fly 3 and the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. Many thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Please do comment below and tell me your opinions on that ecological impact of the Nike Joyride. Am I overreacting about it? Well, no, I don't think I am. I'm sure some people have some strong opinions on this one, but I think it's very clear that we all need to do a little bit more to try and sustain our environment. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications when new videos are launched. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.